Welcome to the National Association of Realtors Center for Realtor Development Podcast, the show that brings you on-the-go learning for today's top real estate topics with your host, Monica Neubauer. To get more information about the courses and credentials discussed here, visit our site at www.onlinelearning.realtor and use the coupon code PODCAST, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, to obtain 15% off the price of any online class. And now on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Center for Realtor Development podcast, the show for realtors all about real estate. I'm your host, Monica Neubauer. As we look forward and move forward after COVID, or I guess I really should say through COVID, some of us are looking for ways to help our communities grow into health and into new places. Maybe you want to be known as the expert in your community. Maybe you want to network with community leaders to grow your business or even just out of curiosity and the joy of being plugged in. One of the ways to do this is to create your own media source as a mouthpiece in your community. And there's several ways to do this. Blogging, videos, even photos, nice photos with a little description. And there's also the way our guest today has done this through podcasting. Aaron Maslianski is born and raised in Skokie, Illinois, and he's a realtor at Dreamtown Realty in Evanston. These are both suburbs of Chicago, and he is passionate about his community, and he's created a podcast named Inside the Scav, which features the people and organizations of Skokie and Evanston. He's strongly connected with his local and global community through the show and his volunteer work. He is a young professional ambassador with the Chicago Council on Global Affairs, a fellow with the United Nations Association of America Chicago chapter. He's on the Global Real Estate Council at the Chicago Association of Realtors and on the Young Professional Committee with the Illinois Holocaust Museum and Education Center. Most importantly, he's a father to two delightful children, Joey and Sophia, with his wife, Stacy. Let's listen in on the interview and hear Aaron tell his story. All right, join me in welcoming Aaron Maslianski today. Welcome, Aaron. Hi, thanks so much for having me. And where are you from? I am from, well, let's call it Skevinston, which is Skokie, Illinois, but Evanston mailing address <laughs> in near the Chicago uh, area. Well, and we're going to talk about your podcast here in a second. And your website is, or your concept, your brand is Into the Skev, right? In, inside the Skev. Inside the Skev. And so um, I did figure that was Skokie and Evanston together, but I thought, that, is that a common name for your area? Well, the, there's a little area of Skokie that has a zip code that goes to the Evanston uh, post office because this area was unincorporated until about the 1950s. So people call it Skevinston, even though it's not a real name. So well, I, can I do imagine a lot of my that, though. business in those area in Skokie and Evanston. So I, it's kind of a play on words. Cool. Well, I like it. I like it. All right. Well, today I'm ex I'm excited to have Aaron today, and as a speaker and a teacher myself, others, we often share what we've learned and we get back some excitement, but we only occasionally find out what people do with what we've taught them and how they applied it and what worked for them. And so today, Aaron is going to tell his story, but before he does, and we're going to talk about podcasting primarily with him, but I want to remind our listeners about the times that we're in right now, there's there is so much going on and we want to connect with our clients and with our friends and the traditional ways of marketing and just sharing kind of what we have shared before is not really working. So we want to bring some new solutions for you to create some new marketing opportunities and new ways to connect with your followers. So we as realtors, we are highly invested in our communities. And Aaron is going to share how he invests and the return that he gets for himself and for those he interviews. Um, so I think we're going to have a good time today. So, all right, Aaron, let's let's dig in. So you and I connected first in 2017 when I was speaking at the NAR annual on podcasting. We'd started this one and I was sharing that and it was as a resource for realtors and how to do it. And you were there. So tell everyone what brought you to that class and what were you thinking? Just get us started in your sure. story. 
So I went to the conference. It was in Chicago that year, so it was easy to get to for me. And I signed up for a bunch of different sessions, and one of them was about podcasting. And I had been trying to figure out how do I reach out to um, my sphere, my community, with original content that they'll care about. Because so many times I see people posting things on social media where it's just regurgitating content or sharing your listings. And it doesn't really get uh, that engagement that you're looking for. No. So I was trying to do some like Facebook lives and and talk about Q and A's with for real estate and you know specifically real estate related. But I was thinking, you know what? It would be so interesting to do a podcast and and but I had no idea how to do it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to this session and listen in and see how you do it. And I listened to it and I thought about it for a while and I didn't actually start the podcast until about a year later, but it gave me a lot of the background knowledge and technical expertise to be able to at least know what kinds of questions to start to ask. As we're going to move forward in this topic and dig in a little bit, I want our listeners to think of our conversation about podcasting in the context of providing anything along the lines of, okay, I'm making up a word here, connectedness sharing. <laughs> I like to put words mm -hmm. together, right? Well, as you obviously do too with the scab there. So, <laughs> so definitely do. Yes, we want we want people to connect with their followers, and there's more ways to do it than podcasting. So, if you love the idea of blogging, or you're making videos, you like still photography, any format that you like to share, and ways you like to create contact uh, content is good for this conversation. So, even if podcasting isn't your format. Still listen and consider the ideas and the suggestions and the spirits and even some of the habits that we're going to talk about today. You can apply it to any format where you're creating your own content. Okay, so tell us how you prepared. Now, you came and you found out there's some technical things to it. Did that seem overwhelming to you, a lot to you, or once you got into it, it was pretty easy? Well, it wasn't too overwhelming to me. I've always been really um, knowledgeable about computers and equipment and things like that. So it comes kind of natural to me. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, searched on Google, I talked to friends, you know, just to learn more about what types of equipment to get. And as I was somewhat procrastinating about what to do, I, I work with a, uh, a business coach. Um, and she's like, well, wh what is it going to take to start it? And I said, well, I just have to like, go buy the equipment. She's like, well, then go do it. <laughs> You got so $200 like, okay, in your a pocket. Hundred dollars. Yeah, go buy yeah, it. Yeah, that's pretty much all it was. It was like 200 bucks. So I, I go and I, I order it. I get everything. And, uh, you know, I, I recorded my first episode, which is just like a five-minute introduction. And basically, my podcast is all about the people of these areas. And originally, what I thought I was going to do was interview previous clients and just help them promote their business, um, which I have done quite a bit. But as I've gone forward, it's just I've I have met so many people throughout my community and been able to share their stories and to be able to have everyone get to know each other. It's almost like, a, um, you know, Mr. Rogers in a way for podcasting. That's really cool. So you first yeah. started out just wanting you're going to work with your clients. What was your initial goal in working with them? Well, my initial goal is to, you know, just give value back to them because they, you know, were so gracious to work with me as uh, to help them find their homes or sell their homes. And I thought, well, I want to be able to give back to them. And it was also to be able to hopefully where they shared on their social media and their friends and family hear it. And, you know, if they're looking for homes, you know, it's, in, you know, originally just to get business in many ways, but what it's grown to is just a great platform for me to be able to share stories of upstanders within the community. Um, you know, there's so much going on right now. And I am so grateful that I have this podcast because I'm able to really connect with my community, uh, whether it has something to do with COVID of what's going on or, you know, equality, just things of that nature that, you know, I think are important to share with the community. And I've been able to really shine the light on, on people or organizations that I think are very important for people to know about. And it's less about me. It's just, it's all about the community. Okay. Let's unpack that a little bit. So when you first 
talk to me and you were excited about to see how, how your podcast had grown and you were just so excited with the doors that this had opened in your community and the people that you were meeting. So let's talk about that, how you kind of just started out. I want to get more business. I want to maybe help my my clients. It's certainly some of them coming new to town. You know, everybody can use a boost. Um, but then you started interviewing more people and that led to more people. And how have you used your platform in the community? I mean, do you are you tracking kind of where your listeners are coming from? How are people engaging with you? Can you paint us kind of a bigger picture around the podcast and then what it's kind of created offline for you as well? Sure. Um, you know, I, I can track all my listeners. I can see how many people are listening per episode. I could see how many people are clicking on my website. My website, um, it has all my episodes on there, but it, it really creates great content for the community. Also, I just want to add that if somebody's coming to move to the area and they want to know what the community's like, here you go. You can right. listen to anybody and learn about it. But what it's done is you know, I went to I went to go vote in the primary earlier this year and I get up to the voting, you know, to where they uh, were to get my voting card. Someone's like, oh, I know you. You're, you've got the podcast inside the SCEV. <laughs> and it's just, you know, I've had the mayors on for both towns. I've had different, you know, leaders. And I could see the engagement and people listening and people reaching out to me to be on the show. And I think that it's, you know, I've had people come up to me and thank me for doing it. Wow. And it's, it's amazing. But some of the things that I've done offline is that it's kind of created a different uh, profile for myself where I'm involved in a lot of different organizations around Chicago, um, like the Chicago Council on Global Affairs or the Illinois Holocaust Museum, um, where I'm trying to, you know, be the upstander within the community. But what it's gotten me to do is I've been able to do live interviews for the Chicago Council. I, I interviewed one of their fellows. And actually, I did an interview for the Simon Wiesenthal Center, which fights against hate uh, and anti-Semitism. And I did an interview of a former neo-Nazi who is now a peace activist. And I did it in a you know, location where it was public and I put it onto my podcast and never in my wildest dreams would I think I'd be having a conversation with somebody uh, like this, but it was incredibly insightful. So it's, it's things that I never would have pictured, but I think can make change. Well, it sounds like making change first with yourself and then hopefully encouraging change within others. Is that absolutely you're, you're learning from your listeners, right? I mean, I'm learn, learning, so learning much. from your guests and well, and your listeners, but you're learning from your guests. That's that is a huge, cool part of it, because I have to tell the listeners and you, it's like every time I record a podcast episode, I almost literally almost without fail, I go into my husband and I say, man, I just had the greatest time having this conversation with someone for my podcast. This is so cool that I get to talk to these people. And it's just it's such a privilege to get into people's stories. I just is that kind of do you feel that kind of curiosity and interest too? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm so curious to hear these people's stories. And the thing I love the most, actually, is after the recording's over. And then the people, you know, I everyone's pretty relaxed during the interview. But once the recording's over, you get to hear the real juicy good stuff. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm sitting there with some of these people. I'm like, how am I? How is this happening? And like it. But it's so it's so interesting. And there's so many different stories of what's actually going on. And um, yeah, I think you you learn a lot. And also you learn how everybody is so connected to each other. And like what I've found are some people are super connectors where they just know everybody and they can introduce you. And some people I've had on my show are like that. And um, it's just so fascinating to see that. And but because they have those types of networks, they can create an influence and change easily because they could just say, oh, you want to talk to this person? I'll make that happen. And then you can start to, you know, promote positive uh, messaging to get people away from maybe when things are tough where they think everything is going to be negative, but there can be positive and you could kind of latch on to that. Let me ask you this question because I'm maybe, I don't know if our listeners might be thinking this. I, I know that 
how much I enjoy creating the podcast and asking questions because I'm a curious person. And it sounds like you're a curious person. So as you started doing this, how did you develop your skill of interviewing people and teaching yourself to ask better questions? Um, you know, I've never, I don't have a background in media. I, my, my degree is in urban planning. Yeah. <laughs> and, but what I found is that, you know, working in real estate or sales, you have to ask a lot of open-ended questions, whether it be with your clients to learn how to best serve them or to how to negotiate with other parties. And you just, and I've, I've read different books on negotiations and communications. And I think that I just use that and let people speak and then try to figure out how to, how to guide people through the conversation. Um, I think I've gotten better as I've gone through it. As of today, I have like 67 episodes. Yeah. I also do interviews for other organizations in the area. Um, so it's, uh, I think you just learn through the conversation. You go back and you listen and, and you say, oh, okay, there's certain things that maybe I'm saying and too much or I'm saying great. Uh, my father always gets on my case about that. <laughs> but <I've laughs> well, at least he's to really listening in though. That's it. good. <laughs> oh, my parents are my biggest fans. I absolutely love it. It's so cool. <laughs> That's great. And it is so much of a learning opportunity. So uh, that's a great point to say, when you get started, no, you're not going to be as good as you're going to be in six months or a year or oh, three no. years. So be nice to yourself. Um, yeah. When, when we started, I, mean, I think you have to be nice yeah, to yourself. <laughs> yeah. When we started the Center for Realtor Development podcast, we we wanted to start it out um, at a high level because it was coming from NAR. And so my contact there and I, we were learning, we went to podcast conferences and we were doing so much research to make sure we could come out strong. And I think all of us have um, some tendency to want to really look good. Um, but in this, I just want to encourage people, just start it. If you make an episode and you feel like it's just terrible, well, you don't have to air it or you can redo it. You know, it's not like I'm heading into True. something that's, going to be forever. Well, I was going to say going to be forever. Yes, it's going to be forever once you put it on the internet, but <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. I, I started trying doing these things with Facebook live and, and it, I don't think it, 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 it I think it missed, you know, I would say somewhat it was a failure, but failure is just the process. And it, I don't really think there is such a thing as failure. It's just part of your process and you learn from it and then you can continue to grow it. I mean, I don't know if this is the only podcast I'm ever going to do or the only media content I'm ever going to do. I look at everything as a type of learning experience. I never thought I'd be you know, having this conversation a couple of years ago. So it just, just go for it. There's no you got nothing to lose. Oh, and that's absolutely right. Well, let's take a little detour and talk about the the blogging, video, and photography, you know, kind of aspect of it as well, just for, you know, to help everybody who has different skills. If you like writing, you can still do an interview and create a blog or go and meet somebody, take some photos at their shop or in their business, tell a little bit about them, ask them some of their story, and you write it. Um, I have that. That's kind of what I've been doing is more blogging over past years, but I really like talking to people. So sometimes you start something and it may not be where you finish. So that's another thing. Don't be afraid to change it. You're, if you have a website that has some blogging, some podcasting, some videos, that's still good. I mean, consistency tends to be better in the long run, but whatever you want to put out there is good. So talk about the, yeah, talk about your, your, how you, your thought processes with, you tried Facebook live and that didn't work for you, but the podcast, then you did podcasting and you market it. So talk about what you learned in doing the Facebook live that didn't work for you and how the transition into podcasting did work for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So okay. with Facebook Live, I I was focused on real estate and I had, um, you know, I, I tried to put out to the community, ask me questions, Q&As. I've tried to do different live Q&As for real estate, too, to get people to come. And I don't know. I just I, I think that maybe people are just not interested or they don't want to be in a community type platform for those types of questions. So it just it, it didn't strike it. I didn't have a ton of people liking or, or whatnot. And, and 
I don't know. It didn't feel when I'm trying to do something, I'm trying to be incredibly authentic with it and genuine. And sure, I'm absolutely being genuine when I'm talking about real estate, but I I want to be able to create things that people are interested in. So I think what's different about the podcast is that it doesn't matter how many people click like or how many people actually listen to it. I, I hope a lot of people do, but I am feeling good about it because I'm creating something where I'm being able to share somebody's story that you may not have heard of and be able to help their organization. Um, and maybe I make some kind of connection and I open somebody's eyes up and it's, um, I'm making up one positive change and, you know, it, you, you don't know where it's going to come out and how it's going to help somebody. So I always feel like I'm doing something good and that actually, uh, creates good momentum for me throughout my life. So it, you know, it doesn't matter the medium, like you said, and quite frankly, I've had to adjust during this time too, because I can't interview anybody in person. I've been doing it all remote. And then I, have since it's been remote, I've been doing a lot of video with it too. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think the medium matters. I think it's how you feel comfortable. And I've even done things where, like, I went to the the Water Reclamation District building in Skokie, and it's something that people drive by all the time, and it's smelly, but it's interesting. And I went in there, and I did an interview of the people from the – one of the commissioners from the uh, Metropolitan Water Reclamation District and the plant manager and the PR person from the uh, – from the district. And I had a video crew come with me too to take video of the inside just so people can see. So it's like, if I think that it's going to be interesting, if, if, you know, it's basically what I think is interesting yeah. and you know, you, you may not necessarily think it is, but I'm getting a kick out of it. <laughs> so ah. I, I think that comes out when I'm talking with people and uh, showing it and, and it just makes my my job as a real estate agent or anything else that I'm doing so much easier because I'm just constantly busy and focusing on positive things. I, there's so much in what you've just said. I want to bring a few points out that you said in, in what this last two minutes. One was you're doing something you enjoy doing. So no mm -hmm. matter what the result is, you are enjoying doing it. But two, I love it. Yeah. But two, you do care about the results. So even though you enjoy talking about real estate and you enjoy the idea of the Q&A, you also recognize when something wasn't working. And so, OK, that one wasn't working. So we set that aside. But you're still pursuing that which you love. You're feeding your curiosity about things that you enjoy, which then creates an enthusiasm that attracts other people to you and to what you're doing. Absolutely. And you know, when I'm thinking about it, a lot of people talk about user experience. And when I'm thinking about certain things like this, I'm thinking, what is the user? What is the consumer thinking about it? And if they're bored by certain things that might be just real estate related, and but they want to know about the community and they want to know about what is the mayor thinking about this or what is this downtown district doing or you know, what's this restaurant like and how, how did it start? Like, that's interesting. And that's that might be a reason why you know, I love my community or I want to be a part of that community. Yeah. And I think that's uh, it's more effective in certain ways. And if somebody wants to have a private conversation with me about something having to do with my business, then we could do that offline. Uh, but I don't have to be everything to everyone. But it, it's I want to be able to engage my community that way. OK, so you're enjoying it. You're pleased with the results in a general sense. But let me ask you this question. Is it resulting in increased business for your real estate business? Um, I think it has. You know, there's certainly people that have spoken with me uh, because they didn't know me before. And now uh, maybe I'm listing their house or I'm helping them buy. And, you know, thankfully, I've I've had a, a good stream of business where um, but I think that it's a long game. You know, I'm not yep. looking at this where I'm paying for a lead and it's going to turn into instant business. What I'm doing is something that's going to be there for a very long time. It's going to 
And it's going to connect with a lot of different spheres of people that I may have not have had anything to do with beforehand. Right. So it might not be that the business is coming tomorrow, but it might be coming in a year or two years or three years. You, you don't know. And right. I'm okay with that because yeah. I'm committed to this. I've been in this business for nine years. Well, and, and that's why it's so important if you take on something like a blog or a podcast or you're committed to doing videos that you do it because you love it. Because the result is likely not going to be immediate. Um, and and no. I wanted to bring that on to tell people who are thinking about this, gosh, if I start writing a blog, then people are going to just, you know, they're going to find me on the internet better. I'm going to get more business. And I have gotten business and I have gotten calls from my blog um, over the years. But in my mind, I have that same kind of concept as you, you know, and when I haven't been focusing on it, I go, well, I still want to keep that alive because my blog is very local centric as well. And it will stand this test of time. Like I could step into it and pump it up into more of what you're doing at any time if I decide I want to. So once you start something and invest in it, even if you don't blow it into something big in the first year or two, it's going to be something ongoing. And that content is going to remain useful to your listeners, to your clients and useful to you for content and for just having something to share with your followers. It's going to last for a long time. It, it's not, it is. It's, it's never wasted. It's unique. And, you know, even I, I got very, very lucky where I got featured in the Chicago Tribune in the Sunday front section of the paper um, about the podcast. And it's you don't know where it's going to lead. <laughs> so right. and you can't pay for that type of exposure. So I think it's you're not necessarily going to get something like that. But like you said, it's just go and do it and and enjoy what you're doing. Well, and let's mention at this point, um, I have an earlier episode where I interviewed Moore Zucker from Denver, and she shares about a blog. And she was working on her blog, The Denver Ear, for years. Um, she's, you know, I've been around her, you know, over time since then. And she said it really actually took four years before it hit some kind of really critical, powerful place where it converted into steady business. And so that's just another testimony of what you just said is we do this for the long haul and because we like it and enjoy it, not just it's not going to be an immediate. It's kind of like so much else with real estate. You know, even if you're farming or other ways you're connecting with people, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, you know, it just it takes time. It takes time. And, you know, I listened to that op uh, that episode that you had with more soccer uh -huh. and I kept thinking to myself, my God, she's doing just what I'm doing. It's yeah. just a different medium. She's got this great blog all about the events of Denver. And, you know, you want to know about Denver, you're going to find everything there. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, I could, I sell real estate. Yeah. And it's just so subtle, but it's so smart because it gets people hooked um, on the interesting content. It's not just where you're bombarding them with them. Look how great I am because I sold uh, this million dollar house or this or that. Like it's about providing great user experience, being humble about it and helping people. And I think that's that's where it's at. I think that's the right way to go about marketing. Not to say that you shouldn't do the other things too because we all need the, you know, business on a regular stream of business. But I think that there's something really uh, good about being passionate about what you're putting yourself into. Well, and if you're, you know, going back to what you were saying about your Facebook Live, where you are posting things about real estate and what people might be curious about that, they can Google that. And there's so many people talking about that. But there aren't mm -hmm. as many people talking about your niche community. There just aren't. You're right. You know, what I found, though, is there are a couple other podcasts that people do stuff having to do with Evanson or Skokie. Uh -huh. um, and I've, ha I've had those people on my show. Way like, to go. You know, <laughs> yeah, why not? They're part of the community. Like, look, they, they, they're, everyone's just trying to help the community. So, like, I had these people on who do this It's Skokie podcast. And we did a simulcast. And it was so much fun. And I've had uh, this other uh, person. She runs a, a place called Evanston Made. It's a nonprofit to help, uh, you know, Evanston artists. And she interviews lots of people all around Evanston. Super interesting. Like, that's – it's totally cool. Like, we're, we're all in it for the positive. Well, and even in that situation, so you connect with her and you help boost her listenership. 
of people who like to learn about the arts and artists and people who don't want to listen to it won't go. So it doesn't take anything away from what you do to expose people into a niche of something else. Because what exactly. they do is different. So it's just exposing. If you like it, go over here. Do what you like. We're providing great stuff. Ah, this is so cool how it's all kind of turned out for you. Um, <laughs> yes. I, now I just, I love hearing these stories and how people get in their communities. And they're right now with one of the beautiful things about podcasting is it does allow people to tell their stories. And in this day and age of sound bites and quick headlines that don't have enough information. The podcast allows us to get in a little bit deeper while we're driving in our car. We can get away from some of the limited resources that are on radio and it provides like a, it's like a magazine. It's kind of like a modern magazine article in your niche and we just need it so much. We do. It's just a really good way to slow down and learn. And yeah. things that you never would have thought you'd know about, <laughs> you know, right? it's led me, it's led me even to do things with, um, the global real estate council at the Chicago association of realtors. Um, and I went with them on a trade mission to Thailand last year. And I even did a, a podcast there where I interviewed the, the heads of the association cool. and we talked about, you know, how, how this all works. So like, there are certain things that like, you'd never even think that you'd learn about, or, and, you know, if you're interested in this podcast about Skokie or Evanston, but there's, <laughs> connect, everything is all connected. So it's like, it just, and you know, since I run the show, I get to choose what I want to do. Which <laughs> so is occasionally nice. I get to do something that's a little different. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you look, I'm part of it. So it's tied to the area, whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's no board of directors. <laughs> oh, that's the greatest thing too. You don't have to ask for permission. <laughs> uh, there's no studio manager or something like that. It's me. <laughs> I want to I do one it. on this today. I'm going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know, an interesting thing with that, like with the Center for Realtor Development podcast, you know, we do 12 a year. I mean, this year we did 14 because we added a couple with for COVID specials, but we do 12 a year. So we do actually plan them out with intent and consider what we're going to do and to vary the message. Um, but when you're doing an episode, a podcast or a, a blog or something that's maybe not quite as tightly scheduled, um, you can kind of do spur of the moment things. You can m turn on a dime. If you encounter something and you've got your microphones or your phone app or whatever, you're ready to be doing that. You become on the alert to capture something interesting. It, you know, those uh, receptors that watch for things and it gives you a platform to say those things. So yeah, part of it is, I want to talk about this. This is how it's relevant and let's do this. Um, it's a, it's Absolutely. I mean, I, especially during these times, what I've done, I've dramatically increased how many episodes I've done. And, and you know, one thing to look out for is don't burn yourself out because yeah, yeah talk <laughs> that about that. Go, go on. You can talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, th there was a point and some of my friends will laugh at me. Hi, Jeremy. Um, <laughs> that, uh, I, I think I was doing two or three a week at some point and I, I've taken a little break right now just because it's just so much. And, but I wanted to put out good, interesting, important content for the community. So, you know, if I'm able to get, like I had Jan Schakowsky, who's the U.S. representative for the district that we're in. Like, I wanted to have her on. You know, I wanted yeah. to talk about what's going on, the stimulus programs, everything else. Like, yeah, let's do it. Like, and there's, and I actually had a bunch of things recorded before COVID hit and I hadn't put them out. And it's like, you have to like figure out, okay, how, how do you play this in? How do you add something beforehand? Because you can edit and you could add a message beforehand about it. So it teaches you a lot about adaptability. Yeah. Um, and it's, and how, what type of message you want to give out to the community. It's, and it's interesting though. It's, and I think what's so great about being able to be flexible is that if something happens, like for instance, in Evanston, there was an article that came out about this organization called Connections for the Homeless. And what they did when the stay at home order started is they said, okay, we're getting everybody off the streets in Evanston, just doing it. 
they got everybody off the streets. They got them into hotels or shelters, and there were no homeless people on the streets during the stay at home order. So I'm like, I've got to learn more about this. I'm so curious to know how they did this. So I had, um, you know, the director of development, Nia uh, Tavularis from that organization on the show a couple days later, and we talked about it. And it was fantastic just to be able to share that. And that's what's so amazing about having a platform to speak. I want to have a, a voice within the community. And by being able to talk with people in the community, it gives me that voice. And that's what's so important. Everything you say just creates so many other things in my mind about just the coolness of that. Um, it, it's so true that acting, do you feel a little bit like a news source? Yes. Yes, absolutely. I mean, people have said to me, "You're, I'm providing something that's missing because of the you know, downfall of local news because people don't spend the money on it anymore. Um, and these organizations just don't have it. So, you know, like I've had people on, I had a uh, Brandis Freeman on, she is uh, an anchor on the show called Chicago tonight. And it's on uh, the local PBS WTTW station and they do a broadcast about Chicago local news and it's slowed down and, and where it's not just very fast sound bites. but we talked about when I interviewed her, how, this format allows for longer, you know, you can, however long it needs to be, and you just really get to hear the full story. And yeah, I do feel like I'm. It's a modern day uh, local uh, media in many ways. And there's, you know, I have a lot of interest in global things too with some of the organizations I've been involved in, and that's why I kind of intersperse a lot of that within my my content and showing um, episodes of people who are immigrants to the area and the value of people being here. Um, you know, I, I try not to get too political with it, but in the same point in time. I'm trying to uh, espouse my values through it. And I think that um, that's kind of what media is. So, yes, in many ways, it is a media source. But, you know, the sponsor is me. Right. <laughs> the sponsor is you. Well, and again, that's, yeah, it makes that, it easy. that's where you get to have your your values on it. And the part of the success or failure of that is if your values and what you're sharing resonates with your listeners. You know, and and yeah. And that's kind of one of the questions that I mentioned to you that I was going to ask about was, <clears throat> I want to talk about the number of followers, but not specifically. I don't want to know how many listeners you have. I don't want to know your numbers like that. But I want to talk about as people begin to blog or have even people watch their videos. You know, I look at this when I post a video about a listing, how many people watched it? Was that enough people, you know, in your Facebook live, how many people watched it? Um, certainly a lot of numbers, a high amount of numbers, you know, that is influential. I mean, because even if only 10% and you have you know, 100,000 followers, that means you might be having 10,000 people reacting. So yes, there is something to having a whole lot of followers. But when you look at that, and you think about who's listening and who's watching it, again, going back to you set a goal, you're having fun, what makes you feel successful in this? Because everybody defines success differently. So uh, I mean, obviously, it's successful, you're getting people engaging, you're getting people on the street saying they're excited about it, and they're glad to meet you. Um, that is, that's a way cool thing. I <laughs> the, the first yeah. time somebody said they listened to me on the podcast, I was like, Oh, my gosh, you really do? How awesome is that? So <laughs> it's definitely yeah. a cool thing. Um, but so it, what are you looking it is at a as cool success? Thing. What do you how are you gauging success? You know, it's really interesting that you asked that question because some of the things that I try to do, what I gauge success is just making connections and feeling like I am providing a value to this world. And what I, I try to do different things to engage my listeners or the people I've had on my show. So when I had a lunch gathering where, you know, I said, We've got 12 spots at Blind Faith Cafe, which is this uh, excellent restaurant that I've had on the show. And we um, had somebody who runs an organization called Across the Table. Her name's Lauren Grossman, and she has these conversations about – uh, challenging subjects. And that's her organization. I had her facilitate this conversation. The question was, what does it mean to you to be a success? 
And I think having something like that where I could gather these people who are who've never met each other, but who are influential, which in whatever realm they're in, Mm -hmm. in the community. And because it's me, like who brought them together, I feel like I'm that's a success. That's a huge success to to bring people together. Um, I'm not necessarily looking at numbers of how many people are uh, viewing the or listening to the podcast or viewing my posts on social media. I certainly like it when a lot of people like it or share it. I think that's really uh, cool when there's uh, what I love to see is here's something. When I share the posts of somebody's uh, I put somebody out on the show and they share it with their friends and followers. And they're like, oh, my God, this is so great. I'm like so happy for you that you're on the show. And it was so interesting hearing your story. I never knew that about you. Or, oh, my God, like that is a success to me. And it's like I am because I have this platform, I have given somebody this opportunity to have the light shine upon them. And I think everybody needs that. And you get that boost and that helps everybody. You're happy and you feel like you're empowered. And then you could go make more change and positive change throughout your community. That's my success. It's not necessarily, hey, did I get a listing? Did I get a buyer? Did I make money off of that? That will come. I'm not worried about that. Like I said, it's the long game. But if I'm able to make positive changes throughout the community and and within their people's lives. Wow. That is so awesome to me. That's success. Yes. Okay. So you have created all of these fabulous interviews and exposure for the people that you've interviewed. Now, when you create those and you share them, talk about what the interviewee, what do they create and what do they do with the interviews that you share? How does it either benefit them? How do, what do they use it? How does that work in tandem with you? A couple of things are, you know, what they may do is they may put it in their uh, organization's newsletter and mm-hmm. send it out. Oh, They'll good. put it on their social media. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, even Jan Schakowsky put the interview on her uh, e-blast. So it goes out to all the constituents that sign up for her newsletter within this district, which I think is pretty cool. That is cool. <laughs> um, That's way and cool. And I've had people reach out to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they're proud of it. Uh, they put it on Instagram. They put it on Facebook, LinkedIn. You know, I've I've had so many people where they put they put the interview on LinkedIn, and then one of their people in their network likes it. Then they reach out to connect with me, and then we meet, and then we have a conversation, and that leads to another person that I get to meet or some other type of interesting opportunity that you never thought was possible. So I think those are some of the ways that people share it. Um, they tell their friends about it. Uh, they, I've had other guests on the show because of it. Yeah. Um, you know, even what was so cool is there's this guy who lives in Skokie. His name is Shalom Klein and Shalom is a super connector. And when the article came out on, uh, in the Chicago Tribune last year, he shared it on his social media and I've never met him, but I've heard about him for years. He's literally helped thousands of people get jobs, like just making connections. Mm. He is just an interesting very cool human being. And, uh, I reached out to him. I said, thanks so much for sharing it. I've heard a lot about you. Can we grab a coffee? And he has connected me with so many different people and I have hit, I've had him on my show too, but it's just like, those are some of the cool things that like people do. And it just, it's just more positivity going out there in the world. And, you know, another way that I get it out there besides putting it on my social media um, I also have an e-blast that I send out where I'll put on the episodes that, that came out recently. Um, I'll have information about my real estate, other things that are going on within the community. I mean, it's my platform. Yeah. I've created my platform. One of the best ways for realtors to get business is to go about their life in the community they live in. If you continue to show up in person and in ways where people see you, that's where you get business. So, If you have a child who plays little league sports, you will get business when you go to all of the sports games and engage with the people there and bring your good attitude and your knowledge. Some of the people who have the most successful real estate businesses do not go out and talk about real estate all the time. They're just well connected in the industry and in their town and people know that. And you don't even have to bring it up when you go places. Don't bring it up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Never bring it up. <I'm> not... 
I mean, look, people will, people will just start coming up to you and talking to you about real estate once they know you're in real estate. Everyone yeah. wants to know how much their house is worth or how much of this house sell for or, or whatnot. You don't have to be the one to brag. You know, I think right. if you are if you are engaged and you know what's going on, that's good enough. And also, you know, this stuff isn't for everybody. Not everybody's an extrovert, but there's other ways to still get involved in and maybe a little bit more quietly, but still like making connections with people and going a little bit past your comfort zone. But that's, that's really what's important. I think in this business is just knowing people and being friendly and, and just studying your market and studying your industry. That's important. Well, you mentioned not everybody's an extrovert or an introvert. One, I think there's actually quite a lot of podcasters who are introverts. Um, so mm -hmm. they may they may even do podcasting differently, you know, doing just they love the concept of the Zoom call or the call. They don't necessarily want to connect face to face. I was struck by that when I go to the podcasters conferences, um, because I spend a lot of time with realtors, with other speakers, and then I go to the podcasting conference and I'm like, whoa. This is a different crowd than my realtors and my speaker friends who are, of course, all out there. Whoa! And um, so podcasting, if any of these formats that we're discussing, I mean, maybe um, video a little bit less, are, again, you find what you want to do. You want to find photography. You want to write blogs. You can find whichever format works for you. So introvert, extrovert. I mean, the way you're doing it is good for your personality, but there's also yes. um, a bunch. Um, yeah. You know, some of the most engaged photos that I post on, on Instagram sometimes are of like scenery or a flower or, you know, a, a cool building or something like that. And that doesn't take being an extrovert. That's just, you find something cool within what you see and people will engage with that. I mean, I, the same episode that you had uh, that you were talking with more, uh, you were talking with people who were doing, had a whole page about, um, you know, contemporary houses or postmodern houses. Oh, right. Yeah. And, and that is something that people really connect with. I love looking at those pictures and I'll, I'll scroll like crazy on Instagram on that. And if I was looking at for a place like that in their community that they were selling in, yeah, I'd reach out to them for sure. Right. And right. So you pick whatever photos that you like um, or whatever you like. There, I'm, there's um, people who write and take photos just about historic homes or about parks or natural areas. I mean, whatever you like to write about, you can create something around it. It doesn't have to. Yeah, whatever. I just want to keep saying that because I don't want people to think limited or they have to do it exactly the same way that you did it. Um, there's so there's other other ways to do it too. Um, there's a million ways to yeah. do it, and by the way, always throw in some real estate in there too, so they don't forget. <laughs> so they don't forget, right? Well, and that's what I do with my blog. I I like to write concepts. Like I just wrote a blog about um, there's a new development that has come up. I mean, it's been a few years in the making, but people still kind of aren't quite sure what's going on with that. So I, I wrote the blog about the development. I included, I don't know, about six, eight, 10 pictures, and it's a mixed use community. So I said, this is what's going on in this community. They have single family houses, they have condos, and they have all these restaurants and shops. And then I link to the other shops and restaurants. And if I had somebody who was following up with that and promoting that better, I would send a copy of that to all of the uh, restaurants that I quoted in there because they need content too. And they like mm -hmm. that I gave them a mention. So even when you create something, you know, you can put it in your normal ways that things go out. But when you're creating content, you can use that on in various ways on your Instagram, on your Facebook, on your Twitter, wherever you like to engage, you've created something that you can share over and over again. You can refer yeah. back to it in a different context because let's say you you've got this interview with this the the lady who um has the podcast in the arts community. And mm -hmm. let's say they're doing an event in two years even, and you happen to notice it and you're like, oh, yeah, I want to I want to share that because I had such a great time last year. So you create a post where you share 
Um, I went to this event last year. It was fantastic. I learned this and such. Um, here's a link to the event. And in the comments is the podcast episode I did with so-and-so who does this. And again, you can use it then as well because there are going to be new people who are interested in the material that you even created two years ago. It's a new introduction. Absolutely. It's going to be there for a long time. And I have done that where things come up in the news or whatnot that has something to do with one of the guests who I've had on and I share it. Um, so it's, you know, one of the things I'll, I'll mention too, since this is the NAR podcast, uh, I, I got the ePro certification. And as I was going through um, the class and they talk about building a website that is your, your hub, and what I've done is, you know, so many people create these websites that are just real estate and for search. And it's really hard to compete with some of these other larger brands uh, when you're building your own personal site. My site has place for real estate, but it has all this other information and it has a way for people to subscribe. And that's my hub. So it's like you're going to get everything there and it's different. And it might be something that you may not have followed if it was just something more basic. So I think it's 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 all about consistency and continuing to to do what you're doing. And, um, you know, if something's not working, certainly switch it up. But if it is, keep going at it. Yeah, exactly. And people like to see the authentic you when they come to your website. So whatever you have there, have something that shows you and how you're engaged and what you're about. That may not be real estate, like you just said. All right. I would like for you to share some, you mentioned about getting burned out because you tried to really try and provide some great things. And that actually, you know, we provided two bonus episodes with this as well. And we plan, like I said, a little far out. So I try to not create this terrible urgency in creating the podcast so that it's it's fun and I can research for good guests and things like that. But we were in that urgency just like you. And whoa, it, exactly what you just said. It felt so much more of a burden to be really helpful right now. What's going to be valuable? Um, and in all this, we need to have good habits and remember clear goals with what we're doing because we can get burned out. And I, some of these folks who do podcasts every week, I think a, a lot of them, that's their full-time gig. I mean, they're looking to get sponsors. It's very much related to something else they're doing. But doing a weekly podcast is a whole lot of work. So mm -hmm. I'd like for you to share some of the, the things that you've learned as far as good habits to keep consistent with it. Um, setting it up? How do you make it easy for the setup so that once you're done, um, you know, like I have an editor who I send this over to who helps me and I'm really grateful. If I had to edit it, it wouldn't, it would be sitting, I would have all these interviews, they would be amazing and they would be in my computer. Um, yeah. So <laughs> what are some of the good habits and systems that you have that make your program successful for you and for your listeners? Well, I'd, I'd have to say it's changed because my my previous habits were I was meeting with people in person. Uh, I try to get some things scheduled. I, I have a spreadsheet where I'd have all the potential guests, uh, when I have them booked for, what date I want to release it on. Um, I'd schedule a time to use a, a conference room that was very quiet and a place that I would use for it, have it all together. I had all my stuff ready to go like in a little suitcase. And then I have like in terms of editing, I do everything. I produce it. I, edit it, I host it. I research, it, you know, the whole deal, um, which is a lot. And but I would have like a template for my podcast where I could just. Uh, edit whatever I need to, put it into one uh, audio file, put it into the template, have my music towards the beginning, have my music towards the end. If I want to add something at the beginning, I do that. I just record it. Boom. And then I've streamlined how I write my show notes. And in the meantime, by the way, I've completely revamped my website to be able to have a lot more content than just the, the podcast. So that was building my website and doing everything was a ton of work, <laughs> so, but now it's more streamlined. <laughs> yeah. I really should hire people to do this. Yes, but you my should God. hire people to do some of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too much of a control freak. Uh, so I, it makes me have to be really efficient with my time. Um, but then what I would do is I would research the people who I'm interviewing and get it all together, ask them, you know, certain questions and beforehand and get it ready to go and do the interview. 
what I've done now, which is different because I do it on Zoom, I have the video and then I, so I create the podcast. Then I have a template for my video files so I could put the video in there and put that on YouTube and then put that on, on Facebook and put together the, the show notes and everything. I mean, it is a ton of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm talking about this, I realize I why it could be too much. Um, but, but what I was trying to do before was record a bunch of them and then release them every week or so. Um, but because of everything changing so quickly, I've really gotten away from that and kind of lost some of those habits because sometimes things just become irrelevant. I mean, it's amazing how quickly things have become irrelevant in these past couple of months. So I've really just said to myself, okay, something's interesting, whatever, let's get it scheduled, get it done, and boom. Like, it's just much more fluid than it used to be. But I think, like, I've, I'll talk, my friend Jeremy has a podcast too. And what he likes to do is record his whole season and release it all at once. I like to just do it as it comes because I like, it's, it's just very timely conversations on it and just how I'm more comfortable with it. But I think there's many different ways to go about it. And yeah. you can hire people by the way to, to help you. Yes. Like you certainly can. And you can't. it doesn't cost that much. <laughs> Well, and speaking of hiring people, I am going to say, so when I did that podcasting class for NAR in 2017, I put together a handout, two handouts, actually, and those are on my website and in the resources section. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes. So if you are thinking about starting a podcast and that is the venue that you want to work in, um, the handout is a couple of years old, so there may be a few things out of date on it, but it still has lots of the great products you need, questions to ask, some of the things that we've discussed. So that can be a great resource. Um, I'm all about practical. So it's de it's a checklist and a list of vendors and people who are doing some of the things that you might want to hire out because, whew. Yeah, I, I need to look at that. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I think you're, you need to hire some out now. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. But, but the interesting thing, <laughs> so funny. I know, well, one of, I, I, I can do a lot of these techie things and I hired somebody to do my real estate website, uh, during the, the downtime here. And I was like, Oh, it looks so good. And I didn't do it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was so happy. Exactly. <laughs> But, but one of the cool things I have to say is that I could just go on my site and I can make a change on a dime and I could, you know, customize it without having to call somebody or whatever. Um, so that's the flip side of it. Right. It's just, I think it really just depends on your technical knowledge yeah. and uh, your temperament. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And, but I want to draw attention. One thing you said was the reason you were able to kind of change things on a dime to go with the changes that have happened in 2020 was because you already had it in structure. I mean, you already had the structure already built, so you could change so easily. Uh, when we're building it, we want to recognize that we may not be in that flexible state right away. So don't be hard on yourself. You know, wherever you are in the process, just decide seriously, if you want to do something like this, give it a year. You need to give it time because it is a marathon. It's not a sprint and the results are not going to be immediate. Um, so and it's I, not going to be perfect right away. And oh, don't no. worry about that. It's, Honestly, don't worry about if it's perfect or not. Like just just go out there and try and and you'll learn. You know, it's, it's okay to have a couple mistakes, whatever. And <laughs> have know, a little fun with it. Yeah. Enjoy doing it yeah. or don't do it. Um, th that was something I, I was leading uh, a volunteer. I was a volunteer leader in an organization and the staff person that we were connected to, he said to me one day, he says, Monica, you keep doing this as long as it's fun. When it's not fun anymore, don't do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I know that doesn't go 100% of the time. Sometimes we just have to kind of slog through things that we're committed to. Um, but this was meant to be a fun thing. And and that's something I think, too. If if you start something and you have to take a break, take a break and then come back. You know, it's, again, these things live on the Internet forever. And if you have to take a break or something happens, it happens, you know, come back to it. That's, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Be free. It, it, I just want people to be free. It does live on the Internet. One one thing also is like, you know, people always talk about on websites, you want SEO, search engine optimization. Right. When you have, uh, 
you know, all these different types, like for me, at least when you have all these different places, businesses in the areas that you work in and they're connected with you and somebody searches and Googles and your name comes up. I mean, that's also like a huge benefit to having something like this. Right. And Google, they like podcasts. They like video. They, you know, if you could get transcriptions of it, which you can for cheap, cheap by, you know, for, with artificial intelligence, yeah, like do it. It's, it's all these things are out there. Yeah. And they're easier than you think. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, well, our time is wrapping up and we have talked about so many great things with this. I just appreciate you letting me know you're doing this, Aaron. And it's just been a great, a great conversation. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. I appreciate you having me. Well, I want you to finish with the final word. If there's something else you would love to tell our listeners or that we haven't talked about that you'd like to share, I give you the final word. I think the key takeaway is just go do what you enjoy be out there, be passionate about what you ever you do. For me, I have just found this curiosity that I didn't even know I had and skill. And by continuing to do it, you can open up communities, you can open up people's eyes and ears to things that they never would have known or people that they never would have had a conversation with. And by listening to that conversation that I have with them, it's almost like they're sitting in the room there or driving in their car and listening to it. And it could create new different types of opportunities for all different people throughout um, your community, whether that be local or global. So uh, do what you like to do. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening today. My question for you today is, what are you applying that you have learned during this past six months in this unusual season? What have you learned and applied to improve your life and or your business? If you haven't made any new shifts, consider what you have learned and is there a good change you want to make? Is it time to make application from some of the things you've been thinking about during this season? We would appreciate it if you would give this podcast a review on Apple Podcasts to encourage other agents to listen in. And if you need training, go to onlinelearning.realtor for ongoing online educational opportunities to help you feel more confident in your business and to better serve yourself and your clients. All right, have a great month and go out there and sell some houses. Thanks for listening to the Center for Realtor Development Podcast. If you like what you just heard, we hope you leave us a positive rating on Apple Podcasts and that you'll check out our website, crdpodcast.com, where you'll find previous episodes and related resources. If you have any questions or suggestions for future show topics, we'd love to hear from you. Just email us at crd at realtors.org. This show is sponsored by the Center for Realtor Development, an online learning platform owned and operated by the National Association of Realtors.